Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do not know what to do. Evil has a hold on us that we cannot explain. It isn't only the evil of sin within us that we find so hard to resist and even thwart, but it, Lord, is frightening evil in the world that is beyond our control. We ask that you come especially to all victims of evil and tell them that your power and love will lift them up and will also change the course of this life. Lord, we cry out for you to cast out demons once more and heal your hurting people and bring peace to your world. Hasten the day. To you we pray, Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior in faith. Amen. The great 20th century uh, Swiss theologian Karl Barth, he's a big name and you've maybe heard of him, purportedly had this to say. He said, theology is having the Bible in one hand and having the newspaper in the other. Okay? Theology is having the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. On the one hand, the gospel writer Mark, after introducing us to Jesus through two very brief stories, very brief, one, Jesus' baptism, and two, the calling of fishermen, his first disciples, those two very brief stories, spends the next seven stories at the beginning of his gospel telling about Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wild of this world and life and Jesus casting out demons and healing people from evil and other afflictions. Seven stories about Jesus healing people from the powers that oppress them command the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Mark. In last Sunday's and today's Gospels, it is the demons, the powers of darkness and the antithesis of God's way. It's the demons who know Jesus, of course. It's clear. And they proclaim him the Holy One of God so that we might know who the Messiah is, the Savior of the people, from even the demons themselves. On the other hand, This past week, ISIS put a Jordanian man in a cage and locked it and set him on fire. The country of Jordan retaliated by executing two Al-Qaeda prisoners that they held. ISIS has beheaded untold numbers of people they call infidels, yet ISIS's own faithfulness to Allah and Islam is questionable at best. Boko Haram in Nigeria has been kidnapping and killing especially children. Some horrifically they are crucifying. It's unimaginable. A shooting at a business and a suicide happened in St. Louis Park on Tuesday. A Coast Guardsman in Cape Cod killed two colleagues and ambushed a police officer on Thursday. I know you often don't want to turn on the 5 o'clock news at night at home. I know that. And I don't blame you. But we people of faith have to know what's going on in our world, which is boiling right now. Jesus' way was not designed to be an escape from the world. It's meant specifically to be an alternative way in the world, the alternative way in the world, the way of Jesus the Messiah, to change and transform the world because of it and even because of us, okay? Of all the things the Messiah is promised to be, Jesus is promised to be the healer, a healer. The word in Hebrew for healing is the same as salvation. 
And it means literally to make wide. It's the opposite of being constricted and dominated and oppressed. Not only in eternity, but even and especially now. Being healed by Jesus is being saved right now. It's being freed from domination and restored to community, God's community. Restored to a wide love. Here? Restored to a wide compassion. Restored to a wide hope. To being valued equally. To a whole new, a new wholeness that all people and even the world need in order to live and to thrive. Being healed and being saved is being rescued from evil and danger in this life. And realizing a new life with Christ means speaking the truth of freedom and love to the powers of this world and calling them out. It may be the most important truth about Jesus. Jesus heals and frees people, you and me, in our real lives. He heals and frees us from being dominated. Dominated by sin. Dominated by evil. Dominated by others. Jesus' desire as much as anything else is to help people be invited into a domination-free order. He points over and over again to his Father, the God of love, that people would be bathed in a holy love daily, starting again right now here, from God that heals. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved, healed through him. And this healing love is a love that can transform us. It's working on you and me right now again. The only way the world can be transformed is through transformed people like us. So now I will ask you, Do you love the world that God so loves? Do you care about all the ways people are dominated and victimized as well as ways people are controlled by evil? Do you yourself seek a Lord who knows you deep in your heart and not only frees you from guilt, with forgiveness and grace that tells you you are enveloped in a love that helps you through every worry and fear and gives you a way through life that is healing and powerful and is centered in love and in community with a desire for wholeness in real life right here. Have you not known Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. This is your God. And it's the God of the most compassionate love, found most powerfully and counterculturally, on the cross, Jesus' life poured out to save us and our lives and to heal ours. He, notably a victim of the world's domination and violence, who did not become a perpetrator of more domination or violence toward the world. I want you to reconsider Jesus today. He is not Casper Milk Toast. Anything but. He speaks the truth of God's love of us 
to the powers of this world. And he defies the domination systems of the synagogue and of society in order to heal everyone who needed it. With every healing, he creates a broader, wider community of love, compassion, gratitude, mutual respect, and much larger vision for a similar healing of the world, a desire, hopefully, on our part for that, a hunger. Do you ever remember Jesus turning away someone who needed healing? No. Do you ever remember Jesus calling out those who dominated others? The Pharisees and Sadducees, the greedy, the arrogant, oppressors of every kind, the self-righteous, even King Herod himself, all the time. In this world of great evil and pain right now, Jesus and his gospel must not only be good news to each of us, but it also must right now heal us in order to transform us individually and together. Because the gospel of Christ and his church, us, are the alternative way for the sake of the world. We have been invited into a domination-free order here. And our lives should reflect that and manifest it everywhere so that the domination-free impact on this world begins with us and speaks to the powers. In your homes, does domination reign? If so, God's healing will speak the truth to you of changing that to seeking a family that talks and discusses and decides and laughs and loves equally. How about in your marriages? There's no place for domination. It will suffocate any love. If there is, God's healing will speak the truth to you and cause your heart to burn so you know a new gentleness an equality, a true humility, an admission of it, and an honor of the other that must come about. At work, is there domination there? Leadership is not domination. Leadership empowers others, recognizes skills and loyalty, relies on teamwork. Kids at school, where is their domination? Bullies are dominators. There's no place for this. Parents, how might you unknowingly be creating bullies by allowing violence to seem okay and looking the other way or in not calling it out when you see it? Boyfriends and girlfriends, where domination is present, get out. Know it when you see it and walk away. Do not let it oppress you for the rest of your life. Better yet, for those of you who see dominating tendencies in your own personalities, put an end to them. Don't hide behind the excuse, I'm just wired that way, because you're not. It has been taught to you. And in our world, where are we as people of faith banding together with all people of goodwill and speaking to the horrors of terrorism and violence and domination? I'm preaching to myself here as well. If we're not, why not? Are we letting political or ethnic or religious differences divide us? If so, we are most to be pitied. Speak out. Seek companions in doing this as well. As Christ is our witness and our companion and voice, may we speak the truth of God's saving, healing love to the powers of this world, starting here and now with us ourselves. Amen.